Hi, I'm Jenny. Thank you for stopping by the Unconventional Homestead. Tonight, we're making corn cob broth. It's something that you would normally just throw away, turn into something amazing. I'll be making two other videos, you'll want to check those out, where I'll be using this broth to make a corn chowder. I'll be delivering to the people this weekend. People love it and it's super easy. Cannot be canned because it has cream in it, but then also we'll use the broth to make a corn cob jelly. It's amazing. It's broth or water made out of corn cobs, sugar, and pectin. So make sure you look up those two things, but this could be used as a base for any soup. Could be for a vegetable broth or another corn soup, a chicken tortilla soup or anything like that. I don't roast it. Some people will roast the corn before they do it. I don't. So what I did this fall, well, late summer, when our sweet corn came in, we canned sweet corn for the first time. I did do some in the freeze dryer and I saved most of the cobs because here's the other thing. There's only so much broth that I can use and I do use a lot, but um, there's a lot of corn cobs that we go through too. So anyway, I've had these in the freezer. I saw them and again, remember my one goal is clean out the freezer. Use the food to preserve food. So I have my ball tech canner and I'm gonna turn it on to high. So tonight I will have this on high and get it close to a boil and then I will turn it down and I will let it go until tomorrow night. So almost 24 hours. The first thing I'll make is the soup and I'll probably put the broth, the rest of the broth in the refrigerator to make the corn cob jelly probably over the weekend. But I thought I might as well get started. So I have two bags, about 18 cobs, and that's it for this broth. So it's I put some water in there already, and then I put the cobs in and I'll fill the water up to the maximum fill line. I've used this, oh, for the turkey broth. Um, and I love this, this is a, water bath canner. I've never used it for that. I've only used it to make broth because I'm gonna move you around here. There is a spigot here that can go into the sink. So I'm able to easily get the broth out. I usually put a strainer over here and um, and able to get the broth out. It's quick to fill. This is where I set it on my counter. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm <laughs> I'm not a huge corn fan. I, I, I love that Anthony grows the sweet corn. I love making corn relish. Um, I enjoyed canning corn this year. Freeze drying is probably the route that I will go in the future. It's super easy takes up less space. Um, but anyway, this broth makes the whole house smell amazing. I love it. And so I'm really looking forward to this corn chowder. Um, I did not make that this fall. And I'm looking forward to it because normally I make it and then I put it in jars in my freezer. But I decided that I'll just make it a few times this year for the people who like it. We have a neighbor who originally was the one who said, hey, have you ever made corn chowder? So a few years ago, I started making it. And uh, my mom and Anthony um, and our neighbor really enjoy it. So um, we're gonna make it for our smaller group of people that we make food for um, this week. And then we'll have some for the freezer, which will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna get it as close to that fill line as possible. 
because I want to get as much of this broth as I can. And I may even show you, I may be able, depending on how many quarts I get, I might be able to show you how I um, can broth as well. So we'll see. Okay, and then this has a lid. And I'll bring you back throughout the process, but um, I will link below the, the Ball Fresh Tech canner. It's made making broth so much simpler. So anyway, I hope you'll come back and watch the process of making corn broth. 24 hours later and the corn broth is done. It smells amazing. So we got lots of stuff going on today, tonight at the homestead. I got home from work. I started vanilla ice cream in her ice cream maker. I have hard boiled eggs going in the Instapot. Out in the garage, I have bacon in my air fryer. Downstairs, I have our freeze dryer Nelly going with broth in it. And we have this. So I'm trying to keep everything going. But I'm gonna start by straining the broth. So this is my Ball Tech canner, it has a spout. I have a sieve and then an eight uh, cup uh, measuring cup that I am going to put six cups in. That's going to be enough for me to make the corn cob jelly. It'll be for two batches. That's what I made the last time I made it. Um, and I think I will do that. I know I have more corn cobs to make broth down at my friend Donna's freezer. I know I have some at her house too. Anyway, so I'm just gonna make two batches. So that six cups is a double batch. That's, I'll be making that at one time. So make sure you look up that video. I will be making it later. But this is what I do. So I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit. But I have the measuring cup with the sieve and then I just, open it up this catches all the little floaties and that type of thing and of course i was holding it the wrong way oh, i just need about a half a cup more I want to show you so I also whenever I do anything when I start a night of cooking which is usually just so you guys know probably this time of year non-harvest time four to five nights a week I am cooking baking and after work um, I wash out both sides of the sink I wipe down all the counters because my eggs that have three minutes left and then I'll natural release for five minutes so eight minutes will be cooling over on this side of that as well. So once I get the soup or the broth done, I will grab that out, I'll wipe it down again. Anyway, look at the color of this. It is amazing. That was 18 corn cobs filled with water to the top of the Ball Tech canner. So I'm gonna go put this in a place where it can cool then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator because I'm not gonna deal with it tonight but I want it to cool before I put the lid on for condensation then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put four quarts in um, because I'm gonna use that to can then the rest of it is fair game for the soup that I'll be making in another video so I will be showing you how to can in an electric pressure canner four quarts of this broth that I'll be adding to my shelf. So I'm gonna use a, me a smaller measuring cup and I'm going to do four quarts to get it ready for the pressure canner. This is not the <clears throat> the easiest way, but I'm gonna do this because it's too hard for me to fill the jars over here. 
And just because I have so many things going, I have to be not quite as efficient on this as I would like. But we make it work. I have the canning, the four wide, wide mouth canning jars ready. Um, I have the, I have harvest guard lid, reusable lids that I'm going to be using. I have those ready. So I almost have everything ready for the canning. I just need to move the Instant Pot so that I can have room for the electric canner. So we sometimes have to get creative, but we're gonna get a lot of stuff done tonight, which is really the goal to have food preserved so it doesn't go to waste. So, I will bring you back when I'm ready to pressure pan. This is the electric uh, pressure canner. I've used it one other time, I think in a video. I think uh, spaghetti sauce, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, this is our broth. I'm using wide mouth jars to one inch head space. It's going to be pressure canned for 25 minutes for quarts at my altitude. Always move it right to the next um, jar, then you don't have dripping on the counter. Wipe off with a Paper towel, I use um, vinegar. Line up, these are reusable Harvest Right lids. You use a regular ring and I'm putting it in the canner. The canner directions say, put your four jars in. They prefer, um, prefer wide mouth for the canner. And then add eight cups of water. Well, when I did it last time, that was really difficult. So I put eight cups of water in the canner with just a little bit of vinegar to make sure I don't get mineral deposits on my jars. I'm not worried about the inside of this canner. It doesn't look like that'll happen. Again, remember one inch headspace is right to the bottom of the last ring. This is my first season canning with reusable re uh, lids, and I like it. Um, I'm gonna just pour this one in. Okay, that looks really nice. Whenever you're canning, you really need to look at um, the directions to your canner. So I have the directions right here. I've only, this is my second time actually canning. So I wanted to make sure I got the directions correct. So lower the lid, go to close. You wanna make sure that this is on you're going to press high and then you put in the time and we're doing 25 minutes what's nice about this canner is it figures out the venting time and all of that stuff so I won't have to come back until it's done which is really good, but I'll bring you back when that happens. So the pressure canner is still getting up to pressure, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned two things. First off, that this needs to be pressed uh, to airtight 
There's exhaust on each side, but it needs to be straight matched with the relief valve. And you need to press the start button. I forgot to mention that in the video earlier, and I just wanted to make sure that I brought it to your attention now. So while the broth is in the electric pressure canner, I'm getting the rest of the broth ready for another video I'm doing. And I just wanted to show you, I'm taking the cobs out. I have the trash can right here. Now these are warm, they're very hot actually. So if you have kids or pets or a husband that's not paying attention or a wife who doesn't pay attention, you may not want to leave them in your trash for them to be messed with. Um, we do not have any pets at the moment, so we're safe, but, um, I just want to make sure that you think about that when you're in the kitchen, because you certainly don't want to be creating a situation. So I'll bring you back when the pressure canner is done. The corn broth is complete. Look at that so easy i will link this canner below because it really is nice with harvest guard lid rings or lids they're not the rings you do need to tighten the rings um, and so i will do that in just a moment but normally if you're just using regular reusable lids and rings you don't need to, you should not tighten them as you're pulling them out. So just make sure when you're watching a YouTube creator that you, they know what they're doing and telling you the right thing because it's very easy to just get in the motion and the steps and not refer to your notes. So thank you so much for stopping by tonight. I hope you'll try this amazing corn broth stock, whatever you want to call it. It's inexpensive and it smells amazing and it can add so much to your meals. I hope that you'll also look at the corn chowder video using this broth and I will be doing a corn cob jelly as well. So look for those and let me know if you're going to be making them. Thank you for stopping by the Unconventional Homestead. I'm Jenny and until next time, make sure you're preserving your food.